got the two piece heard around the world. Um, right. <laughs> what, what was was there some type of issue with you two guys before the fight? Because I because I felt like there was some back and forth that was going on. I think you know maybe he was feeling himself a little bit too much. What, what, what was going on with that? Nah, nah, there was no issue at all per se. To be honest, like you know, the guy came to fight. You know, the guy was competitive. You know what I'm saying? So it was you know like it was something that actually I respected because. I like fighting guys that like that kind of push me. You know, if the, the better my opponents, the better that I'm gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? The more I, you know, step up in opposition, you know, the better that, you know, my skills are gonna show be shown in the ring. So it's kinda like, you know, it, it was a, you know, I it was a um I had full control of the fight, let's say. So I wanna say it was like competitive to where it was like it was challenging or anything like that, to be honest, because you know, with the things that we worked on in the gym, it kind of like worked out, you know, naturally into this fight. But he was definitely not a guy that just was going to just sit down for, you know, for any punch. You know what I'm saying? He was a guy that was really gritty and he fought to win. You know what I mean? He had a cut on his eye early in the fight and he didn't let that bother him. And he came out strong in the third round and stuff like that. And even the beginning of the fifth round where I stopped him, it was like he came out with a lot of tenacity. So, you know, it was just more so of like, uh, how can I say, uh, competitiveness. You know what I mean? It was a lot of competitive competitiveness going on into that fight. Now, I, I recently heard you speaking with Fight Hub, and you sound like a student of the game, which I really like. So, thank you. Personally, which knockout did you enjoy more? The January knockout, where it seemed like you had the flurry against Brown, <laughs> or against Andrew Hall? Because against Andrew Hall, it was a smooth slip. <laughs> Overhand mm -hmm. right, then the left hand put him night night. So which yeah. one did you, did you enjoy more? Ah man, ah, so now both of them were pretty devastating. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not even gonna lie, but the one I could say I enjoyed more was probably the second one, just because I really worked for this one is more because it was like, you know, I got in fifth like Owen. I got to work all the way into the fifth round. And I never been to the fifth round in a pro fight. You know what I'm saying? So it was good to for me to do that, get my rounds in and showcase my talent in front of the fans. And then the second part, the fans. Like, I had the whole Brooklyn there, the whole Browns with it, the whole team character that was out there. And they, like, mind you, I want you to put this, to put this thing in perspective, to be honest. Like, any type of professional boxing event you go to, if it's, like, the third bout of the night, the and the, the arena is still empty. By the time I fought, by the time I stepped out and walked to the ring, it was packed. Like it was so many people that was there, and I honestly didn't expect that because you know, like I said, I was in the third fight. I yeah. thought it was gonna be you know a lot of people was gonna miss it or whatever. Like it was such a dope experience to see that everybody that. I expected to be that I wanted to be there. They were there and more, you know what I'm saying? And then I got to show, I got to, you know, perform in front of Edgar Belinga's people, you know, but Puerto Rico was in the building and everything like that. And I got new fans and it was much more electrifying because, because of that. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, listen, it, it, any, anytime you get a knockout like that at Madison square garden, that's big time, <laughs> you know, especially, you know, being from, here and to to know you got that you know you got the the, the home team and and just to be at a, a such a historic arena as Madison Square Garden where we've seen a lot of great great fights uh go down and to yeah. know that now you're part of that history at Madison Square Garden it's got yeah, a yeah. Good feeling man yeah that's the that's the best feeling man like I feel like every boxer's dream is to at least fight one time in the Mecca, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I've always, you know, grown up watching guys fight in the Golden Gloves and, like, you know, Daniel Jacobs, Saddam Ali, uh, you know, the best of the best in New York that came up, you know, they all fought in the Mecca, you know, and it was like a dream of mine to fight in the professional. And me being that I got that opportunity in my third pro fight, like, man, I, it, it was just like a blessing, you know what I'm saying? It was it was God's blessing, and I honestly feel like, you know, I took advantage of the opportunity, man. Like, honestly, I ain't going to lie to you. I was nervous. Like, I was super, super nervous, yo. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Like, I was like, man, like, yo, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of my people. I ain't trying to take no L, da, da, da. But at the same time, 
I was super confident in my in the work that I put in my training. I mean, so I was 100% ready. I just, you know, my, that was my first time really getting to experience me fighting in a pro, in the pros in front of my home crowd. And I was hoping that, you know, the, the crowd didn't get in my head and nothing like that. And I didn't play with the crowd. And, Cause you, you can get lost into the fight by doing that. Honestly, like I've had my own experiences with, with that. And uh, I'm glad I didn't revert back to that. And, that makes me feel extra confident going going forward into my uh, my, my boxing career. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk.